Here is Kinga Borowska, a new rising star, being coached at Olbra at the moment by the great Anne Murray in a concert recorded at Snape on Sunday. And it's a Spectre de la Rose from Les Nuits d'Ete, the Britain Piers Orchestra, conducted by Christian Zacharias. I think we can say that uh, King is doing very nicely. Uh, she's a young artist. She's there as part of the European um, network of opera academies. And uh, Damon Murray and Christian Zacharias indeed are pushing them even further onto the uh, stage. The whole idea of creating a scene, painting a picture, seeing where you are, reciting the poem so that the music is allowed to meet the poetry after you've taken the poetry away from the music and and re, uh, re-examined it, re-invented it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, like oh. awe. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Open. Uh, oh, uh, voile le blanc. Le blanc. Yes. Les Nuits d'été is a very subtle piece, incredible delicate writing, and we had the chance to have it sung by the original singers because Berlioz didn't write it for one mezzo-soprano that normally sings the whole thing. He wrote it for a baritone, a tenor, and soprano and mezzo-soprano. So I suggested the workshop for several voices and for this orchestra to get to the most delicate task, to be ready for rubato, to uh, romantic kind of uh, values and shifting and all this. And that's why I thought this piece would fit beautifully. It's the richness of uh, stage presence, of accomplishment. I mean, some sing probably one of these songs for the first time with orchestra. We're so used to either sitting down and playing for ourselves. When you listen to some of these accompaniments, the colors, the harmonic changes, they just guide you. It's like, like a rudder. They steer you through wonderful myriads of keys to get to where you finally get to safe harbor and just really guiding them like children learning to form their letters, you know, just taking that patience to do it. And then finally they've got this beautiful um, script, you know, they've been really, really lovely. They're delightful, all of them. Also what is very touching for me when I do the bellias, every single piece ends piano. Everything is just subtly fading away. And so it's, it's a wonderful uh, uh, experience to show people, no, it's not all about here, you know, and boom, boom. And so uh, and, and I think it's, it's very, very nice for this week to end Piano Pianissimo. Over is such a, a centre now, it draws in so many people, and this, this latest is the European Network of Opera Academies. What, what has it done for you, Kinga? Because, I mean, you've done a lot at home in, in Poland. Yeah, I'm uh, fourth year in, uh, in the Music Chapel in Brussels, but, uh, but I, I worked already in uh, Warsaw, also in Gulbenkian. So I think that, uh, that it's an amazing opportunity to work with uh, other teachers, with other singers, uh, to take a part of, uh, of, uh, of this network. Desire, the 
would make sure that the oo is nice and long rather than the yeah. Oh, Mozart's still going on, of course, Anne. Yes, it's it's lovely to be part of the class that Maestro Claudio Desideri is leading. Um, he's had such experience, of course, uh, on these many stages of, of the world. Marriage, divorce, everything in one day. The tempo is really 24 hours. No more. It's very difficult. Okay, end with the philosophy and we start. Bravo, mi piace, che caro signor Conte, ci vogliamo divertire. Now change. Oh, oh, eh, 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 the Count's aria from, from The Marriage of Figaro, it's one of the first operas that I sang once I started my training, but it's not a role that you want to jump in while you're 22 or 23. So I was having a look at the Enoa website, seeing what was available for this year, and I saw this one, and I, and I thought, oh, this is actually a good time for me to start working on this role and then I saw that I would have the opportunity to work on it with two amazing Mozart specialists and uh, in Claudio's case he has performed the Count many times. It's, it's really great to get that mentorship input into your character and into the opera. We all know Figaro, we can all sing Figaro inside out and backwards, most of us in the audience as well. But it's lovely to hear, you know, that they, these, these young artists are getting to know one another and in getting to know one another can then use the recitative format to, to converse with one another rather than just reciting. Yeah. What we all the audience like is, is that sense of danger and sense of experiment and yes. sense of flying with it and, and being passionate about it. That's absolutely right, that when you see a performance that they've re really just lifted the fourth wall. And, yeah. and you're in there with, with them as, as voyeur in a way, you know, but it's, it's a delight when it, when it all clicks together. It is, it's magical. <laughs> Do you ever shout at them? Oh, yes, <laughs> but very nicely. I, you know, it's usually stop. Um, but no, I don't really shout and I, and I'm, I, hope I'm respectful of their, their place uh, and of their surroundings. You know, I don't grab them or anything. I ask first, then, then I grab them. Then you grab them. <laughs> quite, quite right. Well, I'm glad to hear that sort of, I think that was a sort of pleasurable giggle from Kinga. So well, obviously I hope so. you haven't bruised anybody's egos no, or anything no, they, so they're far. they're delightful. <laughs> and I think Snape Maltings is such a magical place. Mm. Well, listen, you bring your own portrait of magic. There's no doubt about oh. that. Lovely to have you with us. <laughs> it's been a delight and congratulations to Kinga. Beautiful singing. <laughs>